Hello viewers, me na Justice CM Tijan from Kidafan Discoveries and this na your program Salon Discoveries. Today na Thursday 22 September 2022 and today again we day na the Ministry of Information and Communication for can witness the weekly press briefing we then can get every week. We day also today stay with me and make we discover this together. Our news brief for today, Thursday, the 22nd of September, 2022. The Deputy Finance Minister, Wan Sheku Fatamadi Bangura, has on Wednesday, the 21st of September, disclosed at the official commencement of the FY 2020 policy hearing that one of the key priority areas of government in this year's budget will focus on gender-responsive budgeting in five MDs. The Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Tamba Lamina, has on Tuesday, the 20th of September, appealed to the residents of South Chiefdom to embrace peace and forget about anything that will divide them. The Independent Commission for Peace and National Cohesion has yesterday commemorated International Day of Peace with a symposium at the Bintumani Conference Center under the theme, End Tribalism, Build Peace and National Cohesion. Lastly, the Minister of Environment, Professor Fode M. Jawad, has yesterday engaged supervising agencies on environmental issues as there are numerous challenges facing the environmental sector that needed concerted efforts to address. We now call on the Deputy Minister of Information and Communications to introduce our guest for today's press briefing. Thank you very much, um, Nancy. Um, let me welcome our distinguished minister for local government and rural development, Ambassador Tambalamina, to the Ministry of Information and Communications, and to formally welcome our friends from the Fourth Estate. Um, before I bring on the distinguished minister, I just thought it's important for us, the fact that um, we are having this press briefing, um, and it is happening at a time when we are also, the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly is on. I thought it's important before bringing on the minister to pay tribute to Sierra Leone's um, showing at this all important session and to pay particular tribute to our dear president, His Excellency, retired Brigadier Dr. Julius Madabio, for the very profound statement that he made he delivered at the 77th session, and how that statement received such an amazing acclamation. A few highlights I got from the statement of His Excellency. First, that His Excellency took time to commend the president of the 76th session, um, I mean for transitioning to the, to the 77th, and how before he transitioned, he ensured that the United Nations General Assembly is brought back to the pre-pandemic pace. We know that uh, the activities of the United Nations may have been disrupted by the pandemic that we had. Um, and so it's important that leaders are meeting, they are having a physical meeting, and we believe that we will have a lot to transition into um, now that we are getting the pandemic behind us. His Excellency the President also commended Antonio Guterres, the current Secretary General of the United Nations, for the kind of multilateral support that he is galvanizing to addressing global challenges. We know the debilitating effects of COVID-19 and how that um, brought about the contraction of global economies, even the economy of Sierra Leone. We know how that shock had been compounded by the disruption in the global supply chain and now with the current crisis that we have, um, the, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and how those challenges have been further exacerbated. So His Excellency commended the current Secretary General, and as a nation, we feel it is, it is very important for him to have done so. Um, and also, given the theme for the 77th session, as we all know, the theme is Watershed Movement, Transformative Solutions to Interlocking Challenges. Indeed, we are all caught up in a watershed moment. And His Excellency noted how appropriate and timely this particular theme is, and for the world to make sure that we all reckon with it. 
we know that with climate change and other global challenges, it is important that we should have some kind of an innovative financing model. And this is one thing that His Excellency the President has been canvassing at great length, calling on world leaders, financial institutions to pay due attention to this, that whatever financial model will be developed, whether it is in response, whether it's in relation to addressing climate change or other issues revolving around poverty, indebtedness, His Excellency the President believes that it would overwhelm, especially for countries like Africa, low-income and middle-income countries if such financing, financing models are, are flexible and they are devoid of those very stringent measures that have always uh, held Africa to ransom. So His Excellency the President at the 77th session has been pushing for innovative financing, the sort of financing that um, makes room for some kind of flexibility, but also devoid of stringent um, conditionalities. As we all know, and again, we are proud as a nation that our president um, had the honor of co-chairing the High Level Steering Committee on SDG4, and also His Excellency the President is the champion of the transformating education summits. Um, when the Transform um, Education Forum was launched, we are pleased to note that it is already beginning to have indication of a multi-billion basket fund. So for us to have a president at that level, that our president is now co-chair of the Transforming Education Summit, and he launched that when um, he co-chaired it with the United Nations uh, UNESCO um, Director General, and he has been co-chairing and sitting side by side with the United Nations Secretary General as a nation who feel very proud. And if it has to do with education, I'm sure when we all do reminisce and put on our sense of history, if there was a time when Sierra Leone was referred to as the Athens of West Africa, perhaps the time has come for that reincarnation to take place and for Sierra Leone to take its place in history. So the fact that we have our darling president, our beloved president, retired Brigadier Dr. Julius Marabio, as the champion of Transformation Education Summit, and he has co-chaired the launch at the highest level in international affairs. I think as Sierra Leoneans, it is important for us to pay that glowing tribute to His Excellency the President. Let us also note that Sierra Leone has a bid to become a member in the non-permanent category of the United Nations Security Council. Um, in the course of our bid, and again, we all know His Excellency had declared it, the African Union has endorsed Sierra Leone as the sole candidate for Africa to pursue that bid. I mean, that is, that is an unequivocal validation for you to have the entire African continent to look at a small nation like Sierra Leone and say we endorse Sierra Leone to be the sole candidate from Africa to sit as a member of, in the non-permanent category of the United Nations Security Council. Um, this confirms to us that irrespective of what um, some other schools of thought that might be saying that this administration is not making the gains that it has been propelling, we see all of those very major and profound highlights, not only locally, but internationally. And the fact that we see nations gravitating towards Sierra Leone and endorsing Sierra Leone on very profound and critical developments of that nature. It, it gives us, all of us, I'm sure, comfort that Sierra Leone is making the much needed critical strides. And so uh, I thought it was important for me to mention this uh, before I would bring on um, distinguished Ambassador Tambalamina, the Minister of Local Government, to come, uh, and, and the, the Minister is here to give us updates on the activities of the ministry and possibly to also touch on a few things regarding um, some investigations or examination on the activities of the Freetown City Council. So without further ado, it's my pleasure to call on the distinguished Minister of Local Government, Ambassador Tambalamina, to take us through those highlights. Sorry. Honorable Minister, um, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, other administrative staff, 
of the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, members of the Fourth Estate. Um, it's always a pleasure to be with you and um, to have conversations relating to uh, developments in the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. Um, the mission of our ministry uh, is to establish accountable and inclusive local governance structures with local communities and to enable them to determine their local services and develop their own priorities in partnership with central government. I need to underscore that His Excellency, the President, retired Brigadier Julius Malabio, and coming to power, or assuming the presidency, had a manifesto commitment to strengthen decentralization and also to ensure that local councils are truly functional. That has been the business of the ministry. And on assuming this position as Minister of Local Government, together with a team, you may be aware that the Local Government Ministry includes not only the Central Ministry here, but also the regional ministries in all the regions. That is, South, Northwest, North, East, Western region as well. So, it's a large ministry with a mandate to formulate policies, to develop plans, and make legislative amendments for functional local governance. Again, the ministry has as its function to monitor local government sector performance. We also implement policies and reinforce uh, legislation guiding local governance. It is our responsibility as the supervising ministry to also monitor uh, local councils provincial chieftaincy administration and develop programs alongside them. The ministry also leads in the settlement of chiefdom disputes. My briefing today will be twofold. I want to capture recent events within the ministry and also to reflect on some of the activities that have uh, continued for the past year. As a ministry with regards to um, developing instruments for proper governance, the ministry embarked on nationwide consultation in the earlier on of my time of my leadership to develop a decentralization policy. That was developed and it was passed by cabinet and is now fully in use. Alongside the decentralization policy, the ministry also embarked on reviewing the Local Government Act of 2004. That has been completed following nationwide consultation and currently we are at the legislative stage in actually looking at the revised bill. We are hoping that when Parliament resumes in October, it will be one of the first bills to be passed or enacted 
as an act for His Excellency the President to sign. We have also, as a ministry, worked ardently. If you could recall, um, the previous government amalgamated chief, chief dogs, 41 in total. What that means is that previously amalgamated uh, areas in the localities were now separated and they required their own chiefs. Alongside that, we also experienced a large number of deaths of paramount chiefs in the localities. The ministry, over time, has worked with Electoral Commission Sierra Leone to conduct paramount chieftaincy elections nationwide. And it is my pleasure to inform that, as it is currently, we have now completed 38 paramount chieftaincy elections. Again, I have to say, if it were only the 41 the amalgamated chiefdoms, then we would have been only left with a few to conduct. However, because of the passing of paramount chiefs in 25 chiefdoms, that increased our numbers greatly. As it is, we have close to 30 paramount chieftaincy elections to still complete. I also have to inform that the ministry has been able to manage and work alongside various other partners to settle chiefdom disputes. We had um, in the priority list four chiefdoms which had no paramount chiefs or whose paramount chiefs had been exterminated due to dispute. We managed as a ministry working ardently to settle and accomplish the return of three of those paramount chiefs uh, with the remaining one with, who will return um, in the next few weeks. The remaining one is the paramount chief of Lower Banta Chiefdom. As a ministry, we have the mandate to ensure that peace and stability reigns in all localities. And truly, we believe that up and down, closely working with the regional ministries, we've largely achieved that in the localities. For those chief domes where elections are still pending, we're still working on modalities to ensure peaceful coexistence and peaceful conduction of those elections. I need to say that monitoring of local councils is a standard um, requirement for the ministry as a supervising ministry. But also need to reiterate that local councils are sub-national councils with elected individuals responsible for positions in various local councils. As part of our responsibility of the ministry is to liaise, but the councils also have a responsibility to report on their activities to the ministry. I need inform the nation 
that cancels since His Excellency the President assumed office. Councils up and down the nation have, have been working ardently to implement government business in their localities. It is a partnership and because they are responsible for devolved sectors, intergovernmental transfers from government to local councils have been like never before. However, last year, the Ministry of Finance, alongside the Ministry of Local Government, was able to transfer 75% of the allocations. And as a responsible government, even in the midst of COVID and very turbulent international situations, the government was still able to achieve that. Currently, for this year, government has transferred 51% of the allocations to local councils. And currently, the Ministry of Finance is working very closely with the Ministry for the remaining 49% to be disbursed to local councils. I have to remind all of us that these are not easy financial times. But however, because His Excellency, the President's government, is very committed to local governance. That commitment has made these transfers very possible in spite of international constraints that have affected revenue mobilization all over the world. Again, I need it reiterate our position as a ministry in terms of our expectation of all local councils to work in synergy with the central ministry in the performing of their functions and making us aware of situations in their various councils. I need to inform that there are various projects up and down the nation, uh, implemented alongside partners uh, for development in these localities. I have to say we have the Resilience Urban Sierra Leone project, which is a World Bank project aimed at strengthening capacities in our cities. And when I say the cities, they include Bo City, Kenema, Kwedi Musembehu, Bank Municipality, Makedi City, Putloko City, and in addition to that, Western Rural District Council. We have managed to acquire a hundred acre land in Hastings for a landfill site. If you most of you would have realized that waste management is a critical issue, especially in the Western region. And because of that, government has made that a priority working with partners to ensure that we acquire a landfill site. And the Russell P project will enable the development of that landfill site so that the bombers that we know will become a thing of the past. We want to express gratitude to the Ministry, uh, to the Ministry of Defense uh, for their understanding in partnering with the Ministry of Local Government and the Ministry of Finance in providing us the 100 acre land at Hastings. We also have the Accountable Governance Project which is also a World Bank project impacting on district councils up and down the nation. And is also aimed at strengthening local governance in all the local localities and building capacity in those local councils. 
government has also been working very closely with the European Union in enhancing local governance, especially in the areas of revenue generation and also building structures to enhance local councils. Initially, the grant from the EU impacted on Cambia, uh, Pujangu, Kenima, and Bombali. Projects in those areas are currently being undertaken. In Pujang, we have guest houses, five markets. In Kenima District Council, we have a multi-purpose hall, one funeral home, two markets. In Bombali District Council, we have a cattle paddock, two markets, student hostels, and in Cambia, we have transit center for vehicles crossing the border, and also stores and markets. And in all of these areas, we also have combats being built by local councils, working closely with local government, uh, supported by the European Union. As a ministry, alongside all other institutions, we do recognize the constraints of the ministry in carrying out its responsibilities, mainly as a result of the current situation worldwide. However, the ministry continues to strive to ensure that His Excellency's commitment to local council, council is realized. As we speak, there's current work going on in developing a comprehensive local government assessment um, guideline, uh, a product that will be used to enhance our monitoring of local councils nationwide. Additionally, um, the agent of the ministry, which is the Local Government Service Commission, is also engaging uh, in the review of the Human Resource Management Guideline for local governance. You may recall that at the beginning of the year, there were tensions at Freetown City Council, um, and the ministry had to intervene in order to reduce the tensions and also to understand what prevailed in that council. The ministry set up an investigation team that looked into various areas of the Freetown City Council and came out with recommendations relating to how to move forward. Following the recommendations, the ministry developed 16 benchmarks for Freetown City Council. And the ministry met with Freetown City Council once to look at those benchmarks and how they are meeting the requirements of those benchmarks would actually look like. For now, we have to say as a ministry that we still have, <coughs> excuse me, we still have critical areas uh, to address with Freetown City Council. From the ACC, that interested partners uh, of the mayor have repaid uh, the money that we asked to be paid. Um, I have to say that the interested partners, of course, would have done this, I hope, with the consent of the mayor. That in itself is clearly a manifestation that monies were inappropriately spent by the Freetown City Council. It is now for the ministry to have conversations of this conduct at the highest body 
of local governance, which is the Interministerial Council, uh, which is chaired by the Honorable Vice President. I also have to state that improper spending is completely unacceptable as far as the Ministry is concerned, especially in areas where there is a cavalier manner of doing so. The spending, as far as we are concerned, was surreptitious and therefore completely not in line with the requirement of the Financial Management Act. So the repayment, in as much as we are pleased that the repayments have been done, but clearly, as the ministry, the supervising ministry uh, for the Freetown City Council and the mayor, we still believe that that matter should be discussed at the highest level of local governance. Recently, the ministry has been approached with regards to inflammatory remarks that were made by the mayor of Freetown City Council at the Freetown International Terminal. The ministry wants to condemn that sort of behavior or conduct, especially in inciting um, civilians and worldwide to attract when the police were actually doing what they, was within their mandate. Issues of criminality are obviously for the police and we needn't interfere in the business of investigating police matters. We leave them until the police inform us about the situation and how those situations have been addressed. So as a ministry, we want to inform the public that we condemn that sort of behavior or conduct which was purported to put the nation in bad light. I have to also state that as a ministry, I only became aware as the Minister of Local Government that the minister was the uh, mayor was leaving the shores of Sierra Leone on Tuesday. Um, when I returned back from my travels in the provinces. The letter informed that the mayor was traveling to the uh, side meeting in the UN. We hadn't discussed that. We don't know the nature of the engagement and also the funding of that engagement either. I have, therefore, instructed the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry to summon the Mayor to an urgent meeting on the 28th of September to discuss issues around traveling and also matters relating to procedures. Finally, I also want to note that his Excellency's government has engaged or has been, um, has worked with uh, the Russian Federation um, back following His Excellency's visit to Russia, and the Russian Federation committed 200 waste trucks uh, to the Republic of Syria. We initially received the first batch of 50 trucks, which have now been distributed nationwide for waste management. We are also expecting within the next seven days, 50 dump trucks from the Russian Federation for the use of Cyrillium. I thank you for listening to the uh, update, and obviously I will avail myself to a few questions if you have. Thank you very much, thank you.
Well, as you have done watch and listen, the updates will come up from the Ministry of Information and Communications, and you don't listen from the Minister of Local Government, where don't update the public concerning the activities of the ministry, and also you don't hear it from the Deputy Minister of Information, as also don't clarify some issues then where they happen now some of the ministries and, and what they happen inside the governments. Me and Justice E.M. Tichan, I want to say plenty, plenty thank you to me executive producer Dr. Isatu Kake Jalo and also to my cameraman Mohamed Sky Bangora. So till we meet again, I want to say peace.